Welcome to the series of Mathematics for Machine Learning. In this lecture, we are going to go through the topic of Introduction to Linear Algebra. And before we discuss about Linear Algebra, let's try to have a basic understanding on Algebra itself. This is the simplest definition that I could come up with, which says Algebra is the study of non-numerical values like x. Instead of x, it could be y, z, anything. If you will pay attention to this equation right here it contains a non numerical value x and after doing some manipulation on this equation we were able to derive the value for x and now if we move into the definition for linear algebra it will make more sense which says linear algebra is a method of solving for unknowns within a system of linear equation the way we had a linear equation right here and the value for x was unknown and after applying some calculation, we were able to find out the value for x. And this is actually where linear algebra helps us with. Now, let's try to have a deeper understanding in terms of how linear algebra helps us in order to solving for unknowns. So imagine this situation right here. Let's say that you start walking with the speed of 1 km per hour. So imagine this is a you with a cute smiley and your speed is 1 km per hour. On the other hand, you have a friend who is also there in the race with you and his speed is 2 km per hour. Imagine that you started running from the point zero, but your friend did not start running along with you. He started two hours later from the time you started running. So this is one more condition and you need to find out that at which point by what time your friend will be crossing path with you. This problem may sound a bit confusing to visualize at this point of time. So let's try to understand this better with the help of a graph. All right, so I have plotted the problem on this graph and this is your progress and this is your friend's progress. So let's try to observe your progress first. As you can see, you started from the point zero and after one hour of time, you traveled a distance of somewhere around one kilometers. And also remember that this graph is a handmade graph by me. So the measurements are not that accurate. Okay, moving on. So after two hours, you can see that you have traveled almost two kilometers. Similarly, after eight hours right here, you have traveled almost eight kilometers. And because you have a speed of one kilometer per hour, this is why with each unit of time, you are traveling one kilometers. So I will mention here that the scale of the distance is actually mentioned in kilometers. Okay, now let's try to read the progress of your friend. So as you can see, he started running from this point two instead of started running from zero because he is starting two hours post your starting point and from this point to this point which is from two to seven within five hours of time you can see that he has progressed up to 10 kilometers right here and this is because your friend is running with the speed of two kilometers per hour and visually on this plot we can clearly see that exactly at this point which is falling somewhere at the measurement of four hours you and your friend are crossing path with each other okay this was very simple to solve on this plot but how will you solve this with the help of linear algebra you can give it a try to solve this problem on a pen and paper okay so this is your speed one multiplied by t which means one kilometer per unit of time and this is your friend speed which is two kilometers per unit of time however i have deducted two from the time unit because he started two hours later than you. And if we want to find out the value of t where you both are crossing path with each other, we will have to use this equation right here, which says one t is equals to two t minus two. In the second line, we are multiplying two with t and two, which is giving us two t minus four. On the third line, we are isolating the t values on the right hand side and bringing four to the left hand side. And finally, we got the answer that Exactly when value of t is equals to 4 and this should not be minute, this should be hours, you and your friend will be crossing path with each other. Also, if you want to find out that after this point of time, what will be the distance traveled by you and your friend respectively, you can put the value of t within these two equations, which will give you the answer. Okay, so I hope that was helpful for you to understand that how linear algebra helps us in order to solve for unknowns as we read in the definition itself. Now there are a couple of more things to know about 
the basics of linear algebra so let's try to see those one by one so you need to keep in mind that there could be only three possible outputs in terms of a linear algebra so every time you are trying to solve for unknown there could be only three possible outcomes first is one solution the way we saw in the previous example or the previous problem where we had only one solution for the given problem one single point where you were crossing paths with your friend the second could be no solution so imagine this situation where you and your friend are starting from two different points however with the same speed in that case it does not matter that how long you travel for whatever amount of time you will never ever cross your path with each other and the third solution will be infinite number of solution so imagine this that you and your friend starting from the same point however you and your friend are sharing the same speed in that case whatever distance you travel you will always cross your path with each other so there will be infinite number of solutions because at each and every single point you are crossing path with each other and it is absolutely impossible to have a solution in linear algebra except these three Another thing that you need to keep in mind that is equation with an exponential term cannot be considered a linear equation. For example, you can take these two equations right here and in both the equations we have x that has some or other exponential term associated to it. So on the first equation we have x square. In the second equation we have under root x. and these two equations cannot be considered as a linear equation so every time we are talking about a linear equation the equation should look something like this where x does not have any exponential term related to it okay so far we have learned a lot of things in linear algebra we have learned that how a linear algebra equation looks like and how does it help us in order to solve for unknowns and also that it can have only three possible solutions which is one solution no solution or infinite number of solutions but still the bigger question is that how all these things are helping us in machine learning how these things are implemented behind a machine learning model so let's go ahead and try to understand that so we are going to discuss the application of the topic within machine learning in case you are someone who belongs to a completely different domain or someone who has no planning in the future to learn machine learning then you can feel free to skip this part but if you're someone who knows the machine learning basics or even if you have planning to learn it in the future then please stick to the end lot of you are already familiar with this equation this is a very basic equation or you can say concept that we need to understand when we are just getting started studying machine learning so let's talk about a very typical and basic machine learning problem where we need to find the value for y and x so these two are unknowns that we need to solve with the help of machine learning and let's say that m is your feature for example i have taken this as number of bedrooms and c is some constant and by solving these two unknowns which is y and x you need to find out the price for a house given the number of bedrooms for it so just to simplify you need to create a machine learning model which will try to predict the house price if you will provide it the number of bedrooms as a feature but still the bigger question is that how come the value of y and x can help you to predict a price or you can say that what role they are playing in order to do a prediction so let's try to understand this thing on this graph right here and imagine that you have been given these four points so you have been given the price of a house with one bedroom the price of a house with three bedrooms five and six bedrooms respectively and then you are being asked to predict the price of a house which has two bedrooms or let's say four bedrooms now these values are not given to you but still you need to create or train a machine learning model that can predict the price for these two houses and since this example is so simple and visually it is very easy to predict the price but how these values are being calculated behind a machine learning model so that happens with the help of drawing a line that fits very close to all these four points given in the data so let's say i start from the point 0 and i try to draw a straight line and if i draw a straight line like this you can see that the distance of this straight line from each and every point is too much and if we try to adjust this straight line by moving it on the graph the distance can be minimized so let's try to change the origin of this straight line so i will put it somewhere right here and after changing the origin let's also try to change the slope of the line 
okay now we can see that although there is some distance from these two points right here and this one here on the top but this line is also passing very closely from these two points this and this so it seems like that this is the best line that we can possibly draw throughout our data points and using this line now we can easily predict the price of the house so let's say for two bedrooms the price will be falling somewhere over here so the price will be very close to 15 lakhs similarly for a house with four bedrooms the price will be falling somewhere at this point and now remember that any machine learning prediction will not give you an accurate output or very accurate prediction but the prediction will be very close to the actual price okay so far we have understood that how a simple machine learning model draws a straight line in order to do a prediction but still the question remains that how the value of y and x are helpful in order to draw the straight line so y is nothing but it is this point where the straight line is intercepting the y-axis so this point is called y and the value of this slope this value is actually called the value of x so if you remember while we were trying to draw this best fit line all we were concerned about that from which point we should start drawing this line and what should be the slope of this line and this is how solving for these two unknowns which is y and x we were able to draw this line that helped us to do a good prediction. Now, I totally understand that if you don't belong from a machine learning background or you don't know the basic concepts of machine learning, then all this explanation will be very much overwhelming. But trust me, this understanding will be very helpful once you get started with a machine learning course. And this is the agenda of this tutorial, to help you gain a strong foundational understanding on linear algebra, calculus, matrix, vectors, limit, and all those topics which are required as a prerequisite before you get started with machine learning. Okay, so this was it for today's lecture. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If yes, please consider supporting the channel by hitting that subscribe button and dropping a like below. Also, let me know in the comment section the things that you are liking or not liking about my way of teaching so that I can make some improvements within myself accordingly. Thank you very much for your time. I will see you in the next lecture.